John Archibald Wheeler was an American theoretical physicist. He was largely responsible for reviving interest in general relativity in the United States after World War II. Wheeler also worked with Niels Bohr in explaining the basic principles behind nuclear fission. Together with Gregory Bright, Wheeler developed the concept of Bright-Wheeler process. He is also known for popularizing the term black hole for coining the terms neutron moderator, quantum foam, wormhole, and it from bit, and for hypothesizing the one electron universe. Wheeler earned his doctorate at Johns Hopkins University under the supervision of Carl Hertzfeld, and studied under Bright and Bohr on a National Research Council Fellowship. In 1939 he teamed up with Bohr to write a series of papers using the liquid drop model to explain the mechanism of fission. During World War II, he worked with the Manhattan Project's Metallurgical Laboratory in Chicago, where he helped design nuclear reactors, and then at the Hanford site in Richland, Washington, where he helped DuPont build them. He returned to Princeton after the war ended, but returned to government service to help design and build the hydrogen bomb in the early 1950s. For most of his career, Wheeler was a professor at Princeton University, which he joined in 1938, remaining until his retirement in 1976. At Princeton he supervised 46 PhDs, more than any other professor in the Princeton Physics Department. Early Life Wheeler was born in Jacksonville, Florida on July 9, 1911 to librarians Joseph Lewis Wheeler and Mabel Archibald Wheeler. He was the oldest of four children, having two younger brothers, Joseph and Robert, and a younger sister, Mary. Joseph earned a Ph.D. from Brown University and a Master of Library Science from Columbia University. Robert earned a Ph.D. in geology from Harvard University and worked as a geologist for oil companies and at colleges. Mary studied library science at the University of Denver and became a librarian. They grew up in Youngstown, Ohio, but spent a year in 1921 to 1922 on a farm in Benson, Vermont, where Wheeler attended a one-room school. After they returned to Youngstown, he attended Ryeing High School. After graduating from the Baltimore City College High School in 1926, Wheeler entered Johns Hopkins University with a scholarship from the state of Maryland. He published his first scientific paper in 1930, as part of a summer job at the National Bureau of Standards. He earned his doctorate in 1933. His dissertation research work, carried out under the supervision of Carl Hertzfeld, was on the theory of the dispersion and absorption of helium. He received a National Research Council Fellowship, which he used to study under Gregory Bright at New York University in 1933 and 1934, and then in Copenhagen under Niels Bohr in 1934 and 1935. In a 1934 paper, Bright and Wheeler introduced the Bright-Wheeler process, a mechanism by which photons can be potentially transformed into matter in the form of electron-positron pairs. Early career. The University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill made Wheeler an associate professor in 1937, but he wanted to be able to work more closely with the experts in particle physics. He turned down an offer in 1938 of an associate professorship at Johns Hopkins University in favor of an assistant professorship at Princeton University. Although it was a lesser position, he felt that Princeton, which was building up its physics department, was a better career choice. He remained a member of the faculty there until 1976. In a 1937 paper on the mathematical description of light nuclei by the method of resonating group structure, Wheeler introduced the S matrix, short for scattering matrix, a unitary matrix of coefficients connecting the asymptotic behavior of an arbitrary particular solution of the integral equations with that of solutions of a standard form. Werner Heisenberg subsequently developed the idea of the S-matrix in the 1940s. 
due to the problematic divergences present in quantum fields theory at that time. Heisenberg was motivated to isolate the essential features of the theory that would not be affected by future changes as the theory developed. In doing so he was led to introduce a unitary, characteristic, S-matrix, which became an important tool in particle physics. Wheeler did not develop the S-matrix, but joined Edward Teller in examining Bohr's liquid drop model of the atomic nucleus. They presented their results at a meeting of the American Physical Society in New York in 1938. Wheeler's Chapel Hill graduate student Catherine Way also presented a paper, which she followed up in a subsequent article, detailing how the liquid drop model was unstable under certain conditions. Due to a limitation of the liquid drop model, they all missed the opportunity to predict nuclear fission. The news of Lise Meitner and Otto Frisch's discovery of fission was brought to America by Bohr in 1939. Bohr told Leon Rosenfeld, who informed Wheeler. Bohr and Wheeler set to work applying the liquid drop model to explain the mechanism of nuclear fission. As the experimental physicists studied fission, they uncovered puzzling results. George Platchik asked Bohr why uranium seemed to fission with both very fast and very slow neutrons. Walking to a meeting with Wheeler, Bohr had an insight that the fission at low energies was due to the uranium-235 isotope, while at high energies it was mainly due to the far more abundant uranium-238 isotope. They co-wrote two more papers on fission. Their first paper appeared in the Physical Review on September 1, 1939, the day Germany invaded Poland, starting World War II in Europe. Considering the notion that positrons were electrons that were traveling backwards in time, he came up in 1940 with his one-electron universe postulate, that there was in fact only one electron, bouncing back and forth in time. His graduate student, Richard Feynman, found this hard to believe, but the idea that positrons were electrons traveling backwards in time intrigued him and Feynman incorporated the notion of the reversibility of time into his Feynman diagrams. Nuclear Weapons Manhattan Project soon after the Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor brought the United States into World War II. Wheeler accepted a request from Arthur Compton to join the Manhattan Project's Metallurgical Laboratory in Chicago. He moved there in January 1942, joining Eugene Weiner's group, which was studying nuclear reactor design. He co-wrote a paper with Robert F. Christian chain reaction of pure fissionable materials in solution, which was important in the plutonium purification process. It would not be declassified until December 1955. He gave the neutron moderator its name of replacing the term, slower downer, used by Enrico Fermi. After the United States Army Corps of Engineers took over the Manhattan Project, it gave responsibility for the detailed design and construction of the reactors to DuPont. Wheeler became part of the DuPont design staff. He worked closely with its engineers, commuting between Chicago and Wilmington, Delaware, where DuPont had its headquarters. He moved his family to Wilmington in March 1943. DuPont's task was not just to build nuclear reactors, but an entire plutonium production complex at the Hanford site in Washington. As work progressed, Wheeler relocated his family again in July 1944, this time to Richland, Washington, where he worked in the scientific buildings known as the 300 area. Even before the Hanford site started up the B reactor, the first of its three reactors, on September 15, 1944, Wheeler had been concerned that some nuclear fission products might turn out to be nuclear poisons the accumulation of which would impede the ongoing nuclear chain reaction by absorbing many of the thermal neutrons that were needed to continue a chain reaction. In an April 1942 report, he predicted that this would reduce the reactivity by less than 1% so long as no fission product had a neutron capture cross-section of more than 100,000 barns. 
after the reactor unexpectedly shut down, and then just as unexpectedly restarted about 15 hours later, he suspected iodine-135, with a half-life of 6.6 .6 hours, and its daughter product, xenon-135, which has a half-life of 9.2 hours. Xenon-135 turned out to have a neutron capture cross-section of well over 2 million barns. The problem was corrected by adding additional fuel rods to burn out the poison. Wheeler had a personal reason for working on the Manhattan Project. His brother Joe, fighting in Italy, sent him a postcard with a simple message. Hurry up. It was already too late. Joe was killed in October 1944. Here we were, Wheeler later wrote, so close to creating a nuclear weapon to end the war. I couldn't stop thinking then, and haven't stopped thinking since, that the war could have been over in October 1944. Joe left a widow and baby daughter, Mary Jo, who later married physicist James Hartle. Hydrogen bomb in August 1945 Wheeler and his family returned to Princeton, where he resumed his academic career. Working with Feynman, he explored the possibility of physics with particles, but not fields, and carried out theoretical studies of the muon with Jamie T. Omner, resulting in a series of papers on the topic including a 1949 paper in which T. Omner and Wheeler introduced the T. Omner Triangle, which related different forms of radioactive decay. He also suggested the use of muons as a nuclear probe. This paper, written and privately circulated in 1949 but not published until 1953, resulted in a series of measurements of the Chang radiation emitted by muons. Muons are a component of cosmic rays, and Wheeler became the founder and first director of Princeton's Cosmic Rays Laboratory, which received a substantial grant of $375,000 from the Office of Naval Research in 1948. He received a Guggenheim Fellowship in 1946, which allowed him to spend the 1949-50 academic year in Paris. The 1949 detonation of Joe 1 by the Soviet Union prompted an all-out effort by the United States, led by Teller, to develop the more powerful hydrogen bomb in response. Henry D. Smith, Wheeler's department head at Princeton, asked him to join the effort. Most physicists were, like Wheeler, trying to re-establish careers interrupted by the war and were reluctant to face more disruption. Others had moral objections. Those who agreed to participate included Emil Konopinski, Marshall Rosenbluth, Lothar Nordheim and Charles Critchfield. But there was also now a body of experienced weapons physicists at the Los Alamos Laboratory, led by Norris Bradbury. Wheeler agreed to go to Los Alamos after a conversation with Bohr. Two of his graduate students from Princeton, Ken Ford and John Toll, joined him there at Los Alamos. Wheeler and his family moved into the house on Bathtub Row that had been occupied by Robert Oppenheimer and his family during the war. In 1950 there was no practical design for a hydrogen bomb. Calculations by Stan Ulim and others showed that Teller's classical super would not work. Teller and Wheeler created a new design known as alarm clock, but it was not a true thermonuclear weapon. Not until January 1951 did Ulim come up with a workable design. In 1951 Wheeler obtained permission from Bradbury to set up a branch office of the Los Alamos Laboratory at Princeton, known as Project Matterhorn, which had two parts. Matterhorn S. under Lyman Spitzer investigated nuclear fusion as a power source. Matterhorn B. under Wheeler engaged in nuclear weapons research. Senior scientists remained disinterested and aloof from the project, so he staffed it with young graduate and postdoctoral students. In January 1953 he was involved in a security breach when he lost a highly classified paper on lithium-6 and the hydrogen bomb designed during an overnight train trip. 
This resulted in Wheeler being given an official reprimand. Matterhornby's efforts were crowned by the success of the Ivy Mike nuclear test at Enute Atoll in the Pacific on November 1, 1953, which Wheeler witnessed. The yield of the Ivy Mike sausage device was reckoned at 10.4 megatons of TNT, about 30% higher than Matterhorn B had estimated. Matterhorn B was discontinued, but Matterhorn S and Jaws is the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory. Personal life. For 72 years, Wheeler has been married to Jeanette Hegner, a teacher and social worker. They became engaged on their third date, but agreed to defer marriage until after he returned from Europe. They were married on June 10, 1935, five days after his return. They had three children, Letitia, James English and Alison Wheeler. Jobs were hard to come by during the Great Depression, but Arthur Ruick offered him a position as an assistant professor at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, at an annual salary of $2,300 which was less than the $2,400 Jeanette was offered to teach her at the Rye Country Day School. In their later years, she accompanies him on sabbaticals to many places, such as France, Los Alamos, New Mexico, the Netherlands, and Japan. Wheeler and Hegner were founding members of the Unitarian Church of Princeton, and she initiated the Friends of the Princeton Public Library. Hegner passed away in October 2007 at the age of 99.